Hello and welcome back to Living Abroad. I have another weekly news recap about the Philippines for you guys in this video. If you wanna see daily content, go ahead and check out my brand new channel called Asia Now. I've left a link in the description down below and in the comment section if you wanna get daily news updates about the Philippines. Jump over to my new channel, subscribe to that one as well. Here's what you missed this week about the Philippines. In this video, I'll tell you about an American who got deported for being in the Philippines and working without the proper work visa. An American vlogger and fugitive being arrested in the Philippines. Range 999, some updates on that Filipino rapper who an American. The Philippines officials want to tighten up registrations for permanent residency and retirement visa. But a Taiwanese national getting arrested for assaulting a trans person. I'll talk about a Filipino vlogger in hot water getting some backlash for mishandling some Targiers. A man giving a whole new meaning to drive through when he crashed his car into a Jollibee and much more. An American vlogger and fugitive being arrested. Uh, let's give you some more juicy details. I've seen this guy somewhere around the YouTube uh, atmosphere with my main channel, but I haven't really looked at any of his content or watched any of his videos, but let's get into some juicy details. In Cebu City, Philippines, the Bureau of Immigration arrested an American national wanted in his home country for fraud. The fugitive, identified as Paul David Cardwell, 57 years old, attempted to extend his temporary visitor's visa using the Bureau of Immigration's online services last March 27th. The BI said that uh, they got a secondary check after being prompted by the system that the subject is a convicted U.S. felon. He's reportedly a fugitive wanted for defrauding around $850,000 or more than 48 million pesos from a hospital in Wyoming, United States of America. A manhunt was conducted and intelligence operatives found him in Cebu last April 3rd while inquiring about procedures for applying for a permanent residence visa. The American man previously made headlines due to the said case after he was ordered to serve more than 10 years in prison. Whoa! He was quoted during the hearing saying, I was prideful, I was ignorant, and I'm a thief. Public records show that he was again arrested in Bangkok for fleeing his fraud case. He currently remains in the custody of Bureau of Immigration before being deported back to the United States. I mean, that just goes to show you not everybody you see on YouTube is a good person, including myself. I'm not perfect, but I'm not going to hear sit here judge people. But um, I know a lot of other channels had him on their videos, talking to him, interviewing him. I don't want to point fingers or blame those people because it's almost impossible to do background checks on some people they just simply interviewing. However, I'm glad that the Bureau of Immigration, Philippines and Thailand are well connected enough with U.S. Uh, authorities to be able to go ahead and take someone that's a fugitive into custody. Uh, let me know in the comment section because surely this cannot be the first time I've heard of this guy or seen this guy. Uh, I'm sure you guys probably know more than I do, but that's just uh, some story about an American vlogger wanted by the U.S. officials for defrauding a hospital, almost a million U.S. dollars. An American by the name of Lee O'Brien, who was a partner of an actress and a comedian, has been deported and blacklisted by the Bureau of Immigration for working in the country without having the proper work visa. Here are some more details. The Bureau of Immigration confirmed the successful deportation of American national Lee O'Brien, ex-partner of comedian Paco Wong. The actress, host, whose legal name is Marietta Subang, previously filed a deportation case against O'Brien, claiming he was working in the Philippines without the proper permits. Paco Wong also filed complaints against O'Brien for financial abuse, intimidation, and abandonment of the daughter, Malia. Last December, the BI ordered O'Brien's deportation and the cancellation of his pre-arranged employment visa. He filed for the motion to be reconsidered but was denied. The BI also confirmed that O'Brien is on the Bureau's blacklist as indicated in the eight-page resolution from December, ensuring he will no longer be allowed to return to the Philippines. That just screams out complacency to me. If you're an actor, a celebrity, a public figure, or whoever, just like a social media, media presence, and you're working, and you're being credited on IMDB, bro, you gotta get your paperwork in order. You gotta have the proper work permit. You can't just come out here, work out like, whenever you want, get paid, and expect not to pay taxes, or be under the proper paperwork. I get it, I mean, we all, you know, cross the line, or play within the gray area of what we can and cannot do in a country as foreigners, tourists, whatever. Maybe you do uh, YouTube or whatever and you're promoting the country so you make some money, but you're not actually working for a Filipino company. Regardless, if you're in a, like you gotta get your paperwork in order, man. Get that visa, get that work permit. Unfortunately, he will no longer be, maybe not unfortunately, I don't know what the story is, but apparently he was abusing the woman financially, abandoned his child. You guys probably know more about this guy and the story than I do. Leave your comments down below. Give me some more information. I don't wanna Google it. I'd much rather hear from you guys. Update on the story of the Filipino rapper who 
an American at outside of a bar at a hotel. So what happened was initially the story came out that range 999, the person said that this American was misbehaving and being rude to his Filipina friends that were girls and even went as far as touching the butt allegedly. So he had shot the man which has passed away. So the big update to this story is that range 999 is no longer being charged for a frustrated murder. He's being upgraded to a regular homicide murder which carries a sentence of 20 years to 40 years in prison. Uh, there's some videos of him released talking to his girlfriend, singing, you know, I'm gonna leave it at that, so I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Watch this. And that was the update with Rage 999. Now leave your comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts about this story as well. What do you think of this situation? So a Taiwanese national got jailed for allegedly physically assaulting and pushing off a trans woman who he accused of catfishing and trying to rob him. Based on initial findings from the police, the 32-year-old foreigner and the 29-year-old trans met in a dating app and agreed to meet in a motel in downtown Cebu City. However, the Taiwanese allegedly tried to call off the meeting when he discovered his match was a trans woman. The trans woman in response reportedly cornered the foreigner with the help of the friend and asked to give him 10,000 pesos instead. When the man refused, the group then took his smartphone and wallet, prompting him to attack the trans woman by pushing her, causing her to fall and hit her head on a corner of a table. The trans woman's friend retaliated by allegedly pushing the foreigner from the second floor of the establishment. The foreigner suffered bruises due to the fall. Here's a reminder, in Southeast Asia, Philippines, Thailand, these countries, there's a lot of trans women. It's really, really, especially on dating sites, right? So if you're dating in the Philippines, in Thailand, especially, you guys gotta remember, if you're not into trans people, if you don't wanna meet a trans person, even if the woman looks like a woman, whatever, you have to be sure, you have to ask. Don't be shy, don't be scared to offend somebody. It's better to be safe than sorry because you don't wanna be in a situation where your life is in jeopardy, if you're offending somebody else or making someone feel bad for who they wanna be, all that stuff. Regardless, it's your due diligence to make sure. Always keep track of everything on your phone and the email, whatever you gotta do, because stuff like this could happen to you if you're a foreigner or a local that wants to date somebody and turns out that the date goes uh, the wrong way. And if you're a trans person, please, let the people know right off the bat. Like, don't be shy, don't be scared. Don't think they're gonna suddenly like you. Trust me, if a man does not wanna deal with trans people, they will not deal with them. So no matter how pretty you are, how, how kind you are, how funny you are, it's not gonna matter. If they find out you're trans, they don't wanna deal with you, you really are putting yourself in a position where the guy might really become violent. I've heard of stories where people actually get killed for telling a person they're trans after meeting or after having sex, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, this is just one story, but as a foreigner, as a local, as some, as a human being, you gotta communicate, be open, let people know because it's better to hurt someone's feelings than to get yourself thrown off a balcony and put in jail. Now, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Right now, what he says, she said, but I think to get to the bottom of this, it wouldn't be too hard, right? Just look at the phone records, look at the text messages, pictures, go on a dating app, but I don't, just don't know how much resources the police have to dedicate to a story like this. Uh, in my opinion, I'm gonna just be honest, I feel like I believe the guy in this case because uh, I would not want to be put in jail over 10,000 pesos. So I feel like he's really um, taking a stand basically. Plus I wouldn't want my name and my face out there, all that stuff if I was simply, because there's a lot of people doing all kinds of stuff, nobody's judging them. So uh, it just doesn't make sense to me from the woman's side, not saying they could be wrong, but just from a random guess. Uh, leave your comments down below because the facts are still unknown and I don't want to just judge people or make an assumptions. But if I had to put my money on it, I think I would just probably put it on the guy's side. That's obviously my personal opinion. Let me know yours in the comment section. Senator Nancy Bonet has urged the government to tighten the vetting process for foreigners applying for special residence retirees visa. Bonet made the appeal to the Philippines Retirement Authority following the arrest of the four members of the alleged Chinese syndicate who are on SRRV holders, so retirement visa holders. Actually, I covered the story a few videos ago, so check that out if you haven't seen it. Some Chinese people using fake documents. But as far as I knew, they were using actual legit Filipino passports. I don't know what that has to do with actual uh, legit foreigners trying to stay here longer in the Philippines by obtaining uh, visas, but I'm all for safety. So whatever they got to do, just comply with the rules. I know I don't qualify for the seniors. Do I? Yeah, I do. Over 35 years old. I just don't have enough money to 
Actually, I don't really know the, moving on, let's go on to the next thing. And off of my personal vows here in the Philippines. Where am I looking at? Which camera? Here, there. Next up, staying on misbehaving foreigners, we have uh, a student from Papua New Guinea, 22 years old. He was drunk and belligerent. A student from Papua New Guinea who's taking up hospitality management course in one of the universities in downtown Cebu City was arrested by the police for going wild inside a boarding house after getting drunk. Apparently, this man got drunk. He started smashing tables and chairs. Um, the residents called the police who came and arrested the man. Reports say that he's generally a really nice guy, but not when he's drunk. A man was arrested for wearing the athletic uniform of the PNP, the Philippines National Police uniform, and taking selfies at a park. Now, to be fair, or not to be fair, but here's a kind of a side note. I'd recommend uh, set aside some budget, the Filipino police, so you can go ahead and upgrade your uniforms or make it a little bit more than just a t-shirt that someone can print out at home. But of course, don't do it. It's uh, against the law to wear a police officer's uniform of any kind, whether it's a t-shirt, athletic wear, a regular uniform, and any other kind of representation if you are not a police officer. Next, we have a video showing a man attempting to capture Tarziers and placing them inside of a cage. The Department of Environmental Natural Resources said in a statement on Wednesday, April 10th, that they already investigated the matter and the two Tarziers were already released by the vlogger. Here's the official statement that was released. You can go ahead and pause it if you wanna read the official statement. Personally, I've seen Tarziers, they're adorable, they're super cute, they are small, but if you ever go see them in their natural habitat, they tell you to be quiet. They are actually nocturnal, as I can remember, and they are very, very sensitive. They actually can die from what I hear, from just stress alone. So this man is out there grabbing them like this, moving them around. Let me know if you've ever seen a Tarzier. They're beautiful, they're really cute. I've seen them in Bohol. Uh, they are fantastically unique to the Philippines, and they got these big old eyes that look like aliens. And yeah, they're just super cute and adorable. And I hope uh, people can be more aware of the laws, the rules, and just how these animals behave. So maybe they can go ahead and uh, avoid making videos like that. That the takoyaki store owner has admitted that the whole thing, well, before I tell you, this is what happened, some background uh, information. So allegedly, this is what happened. The store owner of a takoyaki local business had this promotion going that whoever can get a tattoo of their store name on their forehead would get 100,000 pesos. A man did it, but after he did it, he clicked on the picture, saw the fine print that said it was just April Fools. So after some crazy uproar and backlash from local Filipinos, um, the man finally gave the guy the 100,000, the store owner. But now it's been known that that was all a prank. It was all staged going all the way back to August of 2023, where this local business owner planned this whole thing out as a marketing scheme. Now, there's some very, very mixed emotions, but I think most people are very frustrated by being exploited by a business in that way with their feelings. Not only that, a lot of other people reached out and donated a whole bunch of money to the original person that got the tattoo on their forehead, thinking that he was a victim of a stupid marketing thing. Either way, it's a crazy story, uh, but let me know your thoughts. What do you think a great business marketing strategy to get more eyes on your business or complete fail by playing with people's bodies i mean the guy agreed to it i guess so forget him uh, he was part of the whole thing basically as a consumer as a person watching this i'm sure we all had very mixed emotions of feelings do you think it was a good marketing thing or just complete idiocracy anyways whatever that is and i'm interested in news and travel and airlines pal philippines airline in 2023, so this year, Philippines Airlines achieved its strongest financial performance ever with a net income of $379 million. Hmm, I wonder if some of that money is going to go back to those customers waiting for refunds or if they're going to upgrade some of the problems they have, uh, personally speaking, like vacuuming their airplanes or all those cancellations and delays. In some sea and South China Sea news, you know, lately, of course, China has been provoking and doing all these uh, aggressive maneuvers in South China Sea and now the first multilateral maritime cooperative activity involving naval vessels and aircraft of the Philippines, US, Australia and Japan in the West Philippine Sea finished without a hitch on Sunday. So this is of course uh, a show of uh, solidarity between these countries that they are standing firm and strong uh, trying to protect the rights to their zoned areas of the ocean apparently so good to see that philippines is not backing down and they have uh, some really really strong allies when it comes to the maritimes in some international news united nations slams ecuador's assault on embassy the un expressed dismay on saturday and ecuador's security forces attacked mexican embassy in quito to seize former vice president george glass 
who had been granted political asylum. Uh, another attack on an embassy, of course, over the weekend, you may have heard that uh, Israel attacked an embassy as well, uh, of killing Iranian nationals in Syria. So yeah, I guess even embassies are no longer safe. Some big news for the public utility vehicles, the Joe's Jeepneys that you see all around the Philippines. The deadline for that is April 30th. The Philippines government is not extending the April 30 deadline for a consolidation of the public utility jeepneys in the country under the PUV modernization program. The PUMVP, which was launched in 2017, aims to improve the country's transport system by phasing out the jeepneys, buses, and PUVs that are at least 15 years old and replacing them with safer, more comfortable, and more, and more environmentally friendly alternatives. It was originally targeted to be implemented in 2020, but has been repeatedly delayed in protests of several transportation groups. By consolidating, the PUV operators are required to join transportation cooperatives or corporations. These cooperatives have two or three years to replace their vehicles with a modern unit that have at least a Euro 4 compliant engine or an electric engine to lessen pollution. They will be able to receive government subsidy, which is between 200,000 pesos and 300,000 pesos per vehicle to help them cope financially as well as access bank financing, etc, etc. Look at here, man. Uh, I don't know about global warming. I'm not going to tell you what has happened or what hasn't happened. Of course, it's getting hotter. That's not a question. Uh, and it's not a question that humans are polluting the air to some degree with these factories, cars, all that stuff. But remember, not everybody has the money to go buy a brand new uh, electric jeepney, you know, or whatever. And even for my own country, Canada, the prime minister is passing all these taxes for carbon, all this BS. What about these big corporations? What about these countries that don't like participate? It's not like if you go ahead and make your own area of air safer, it's the whole world, right? I, I, there's a whole bunch of behind nonsense that I just don't agree with. I don't have the patience, the know-how. I just know something's wrong here. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying go ahead and litter on the streets or throw garbage somewhere or don't improve if you can, but you're just affecting people's livelihood. As a government, I feel like if you want this for the Philippines, for Canada, for any country, you have to provide the people with a car or the jeep that you want them to drive. I, I don't know. A lot of these people are just barely making uh, ends meet, you know? You can't... It's just too much. You're going to help me get finance for a new car? Well, who's going to pay for it? I'm still going to have to pay for this whole thing, right? And then what does that do? They're going to increase the jeepney ride fare so they can make up that money. Eventually, the whole thing just becomes like, um, I don't know. This just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't know where I fall under this, whether I support the government or the jeepney drivers, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. I know I'm rambling. I know I'm like, there's way too much to cover in this topic, but that's just the latest. April 30th, no more extensions. Or PUV. The U.S. Army is introducing a joint battlefield training in the Philippines to improve combat readiness, including by ensuring adequate supply of ammunition and other needs in difficult conditions in tropical jungles and scattered islands, a U.S. general said. The Biden administration has been strengthening the arc of military alliance in the Indo-Pacific to better counter China, including in any future confrontation over Taiwan. The U.S. moves dovetail with the Philippines' efforts to shore up its territorial defenses amid disputes with China and Southern China Sea and the ability to respond to frequent natural disasters. Um, so that's one thing. Also, they're doing a two week drill, a fighter jet drill in the Philippines as well. Uh, so we got some army, some, what is the air kind? Air Force. And of course we saw the recent military joint collaboration between Philippines, Japan, the USA and Australia and the oceans uh, showing force strength when it comes to China being aggressive in the China Sea. But not everybody's happy. There have been some protests going on in Manila. A bunch of people went on ahead and protested in Manila, uh, saying that we do not want China here. We do not have to resort to military uh, situations or conflict just because we were opposed to China aggression. Doesn't mean we have to go ahead and do that. A lot of international uncertainty is going on right now. And America, as usual, um, doing things that not everybody's happy with. Uh, for example, recently, they just went ahead and increased some more airdrops for humanitarian aid in Gaza in one hand, but just last week, they passed a bill of $4 billion of bomb and ammunition to Israel. I don't get it, one or the other. Regardless, those are the stories. Here's a crazy story and a crazy video of a man driving an SUV straight into a Jollibee, injuring one person that was eating there. The police have identified the offender as Antonio Labarro, Cardenete, 64 driver of Suzuki Jimmy Automatic from San Roque Village, Barangay, Kamba, Cebu City. Mobile Police Station Chief Captain said that the man was preparing to park in the area when he struck the tail portion of a Metrolink bus. But as a result, he lost control of the car and drove straight 
a Jollibee smashing a glass wall. I don't know how somebody can go ahead and crash into the side of a building after hitting the back of a bus. I don't want to speculate whether he was drunk or high or whatever, but I've been in several car accidents. My whole face is covered because of injuries. And trust me, it takes a lot to go ahead and do something like that. But let's just see what happens with more details coming out in the future. Leave your comments down below. Share your thoughts about any of the stories I share with you guys today. If you take the time to write it, I will take the time to respond. And consider subscribing to Asia Now, my brand new news channel. Go over there, check that out. Or if you really want to show support, you can go ahead and use the super thanks button down there uh, with a little heart and the money sign in there or buy me coffee like Earl did. Thank you, my buhai. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Earl. I definitely will treat myself to that, like one of these whole iced coffees or whatever. And that was it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.